Can the brand of your fuel be more important than the brand of your oil? Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek. Let's dig into the research to get the answer. In the ads for Shell's V-Power fuel, they mention wear protection. Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline is designed to protect your car's performance. It also forms a protective film on metal surfaces, helping to protect metal fuel system components against wear and corrosion. Wait, how can the fuel impact engine wear? We understand things like injector deposits and intake valve deposits, but wear? Can the choice of your fuel actually impact the wear in your engine? It can. And we're gonna show you the research in this video that proves that it can. Shell just didn't make that up. They mentioned that because the choice of fuel, to be precise, the correct additive package can lower engine wear. Just like they said in that Shell V Power ad, that choice of fuel, that proper additive package does lower wear. But wait, isn't fuel the enemy of your oil? We've shown that in a previous video. So how can fuel actually help improve engine wear? Well, you see, here at my day job at Total Seal, we spend a lot of time researching and working with that relationship between fuel and oil, the piston ring and the cylinder wall, because they all work together. I like to call it ring seal soup. And that fuel and how it interacts with the oil and those parts is a key ingredient to that ring seal soup. So this topic, it's near and dear to my heart. At the STLE conference a couple of years ago, a presentation was done by one of the German research labs. So here in the US, Southwest Research, SWRI, is one of the big research labs. Dr. Peter Lee is a good friend of mine. He runs the Tribology Lab at Southwest Research. Over in Europe, their equivalent is ACT. And at the recent STLE conference, they presented some information showing how they measured the wear difference between fuels without friction modifiers and fuels with friction modifiers. And the test method they used to measure that wear is super, super cool. They actually used radiation where they could take different parts of the engine. And this one, they used a piston ring because you know, I'm a piston ring kind of guy, you know? So they used piston rings that they irradiated, then they could measure in the used oil while the engine was running, they could see the wear from those piston rings. Fun fact, the piston ring rubbing against the cylinder wall is the number one source of wear in your engine. We've shown that in previous videos in the ZDP testing we did at Southwest Research. We were able to demonstrate that just by changing the coating on the piston ring, we were able to reduce wear. So that just goes to show how important that relationship is between the piston ring and the cylinder wall, the oil and the fuel. So no wonder the fuel chemistry plays a critical role in engine wear. Now here's the other part. The oil that's in the piston ring groove is chemically different than the oil in the sump because of two things, the temperature and the fuel dilution. The oil in the piston ring groove is chemically different than the oil in the sump. There's tons more fuel in the piston ring groove oil than there is in the sump. So sometimes when we see a used oil sample that may have 1% or 3% fuel in the oil, well, in the piston ring groove, it's gonna be over 10%. It can be 20%, it can be even greater than that. So what's happening in the piston ring groove and against that cylinder wall is different than everywhere else in the engine because of that fuel dilution, the contamination of the fuel. Therefore, what's in the fuel makes a bigger difference to the performance of the oil. Essentially, that fuel can lower wear if it's formulated properly. How freaking cool is that? Actually, this explains a lot of the variation that we see doing used oil analysis. Because every day I'm looking at used oil samples and I can tell you for a fact, we see good and bad results with 
every brand of oil. It doesn't matter what the brand is. We see good ones and we see bad ones for all of them. Why? One of the variables is the quality of the fuel. If you're using a high quality oil with a high quality fuel, you're probably gonna get really good results. But you could be using a high quality oil with a poor quality fuel and get not so great results. And we can see this from the data that not only the ACT presented at that conference, the guys at Southwest Research, Dr. Peter Lee, my friend, and his group has also presented independent information that shows the exact same thing, that when you put friction modifiers in different chemistries that can affect ring and liner wear in the fuel, you can reduce wear. How cool is that? Okay, let's go ahead and get into some of those details because this stuff is wicked cool chemistry. But wait, doesn't all fuel come from the same pipeline regardless of brand? That is true. All fuel coming through the pipeline is the same. In fact, your 87 octane gasoline is only 83 octane gasoline in the pipeline. Both the ethanol and the additives that are in the fuel are actually added in the tanker that delivers the fuel to the gas station. But those additives are different from brand to brand. So first things first, how do they even know that the oil in the ring zone is different than the oil in the sump? Well, they outfitted an engine with a little device that could sample oil while the engine runs from the back of the oil ring. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? They actually developed this where they could pull those samples directly from the piston and the cylinder wall to compare what that oil was like chemically in those areas of the engine versus the sump. Incredible use of used oil analysis, but from an engine while it's running, just by sampling it in different areas. So they were able to see that in that ring pack, you have much higher temperatures and much smaller volumes so that the thermal effects and the fuel dilution effects are much greater in that area compared to the sump where that's a lower temperature and there's a real large volume of oil in that residence time that oil stays down there a lot longer so it's really different what's going on with that oil in the ring pack versus the sump and that sampling method allowed them to see it and what they found was massive differences in the oil from the sump versus what was in the ring zone. And the harder they ran the engine, the more fuel you put in the engine, the more it changed. So there was a great variation in what was happening with the chemistry of the oil based on the operating conditions of the engine as well. So the fuel itself made an impact on the performance of the oil and the amount of fuel also made an impact. So there's two big variables going on. The fuel itself and how much fuel is being consumed is impacting the oil. That's also called the oil to fuel ratio. We're gonna mention that when we do the video about oil life indicators, because this is a big part of that. All right, now back to the results. And what they saw was every time they added a friction modifier to the fuel, they saw a reduction in friction at the ring liner interface, which correlates with the other published literature and the results shown by ACT. Speaking of them, let's get back to their engine. In Europe, they have both premium fuel and regular fuel in the same octane. So here in the US, we're used to having 87, 89, and maybe 91 or 93 octane gasoline, where as the quality varies, so does the octane. But in Europe, they have the same octane fuel with and without the premium additive package in the fuel. So this actually makes for a much better comparison of the results. And that's what the guys at ACT saw, that the basic fuel had more wear than the premium fuel. And they were able to understand what was going on chemically by looking at that used oil and what they found was that the ZDDP, the zinc dialkylthiophosphate, which is an anti-wear additive in the oil, actually gets consumed 
rapidly because it's also functioning as an antioxidant, not just an anti-wear additive. So what happens when the ZDP gets consumed in that ring zone because of that high temperature, it's no longer able to function as an anti-wear additive. Therefore, the wear can increase because your primary anti-wear additive is no longer able to function as an anti-wear additive in that particular area. And this is the window of opportunity for that friction modifier coming in fresh with every intake stroke, right? Every time that injector fires and puts a little bit of fresh fuel in there, here's that chance for that fresh friction modifier to come in and actually save the day to, to help make up for what the oil can't do because of that rough environment in the ring zone. I mean, how cool is that? Obviously my day job, I work for Total Seal Piston Rings, so I love tribology, I love piston rings, and how cool is that to see that in this little area of the engine, it is intense. There's crazy heat, there's crazy fuel dilution, all this stuff's going on. It's like the pressure cooker of the whole engine and it's really taxing the tribology and making all this stuff work. I mean, okay, all right, I'm gonna call it, calm down a little bit, get too excited about this because this is just really, really neat stuff. And it explains so much. So they took two engines and they irradiated the piston rings in both engines. They ran one engine on the premium fuel, the other engine on the basic fuel, and at the end they were able to measure all the wear results, not only from the piston rings rubbing, but also in the used oil after the 120 hour test. And these results are incredible. Remember we have three ways we're looking at the wear from both the engine run on basic fuel compared to the engine run on the premium fuel with the friction modifiers, we're looking at wear via the radiation method, the RIC. We're also gonna look at wear using a 3D profilometer to measure the surfaces, and we're gonna look at used oil analysis. So the first thing is the RIC, that radiation method. And it's a giant difference. We're looking at 7.32 microns of wear with the basic fuel compared to 1.7 microns with the premium fuel. And just to be fair, after running the engine with the basic fuel, that same engine was run again with the premium fuel and it yielded even less wear, which makes sense a little bit because of the break-in, but also shows that that difference between the premium fuel and the basic fuel is real. That was also validated when we went and looked at the surface topography. When you look at that 3D wear measurement, yeah, you don't even need a tool to measure that. You can see with your own eyes how much pitting and wear occurred with the basic fuel compared to the premium fuel. Big difference in measured wear between that basic fuel and premium fuel and the used oil analysis confirms all of it. When we look at the total amount of wear over time, we see that the, from the zero hour sample to the end of test sample, the iron jumped from six parts per million all the way to 110 with the basic fuel compared to only 70 parts per million with the premium fuel. Huge difference between the basic fuel and the premium fuel showing that in that ring liner contact with all the fuel dilution, with all the heat and pressures, that additional friction modifier in the premium fuel makes a giant difference in terms of wear. If you want a more in-depth video on fuel, leave a comment below and let me know. This is why we see such a variation in wear with used oil analysis if you're looking at brands only. Because people will tell you what the brand of the oil is. They'll tell you what the viscosity of the oil is. But no one tells us what fuel they're using. But now we know that fuel quality is one of those variables that leads to the variation we see in used oil analysis results. So that premium fuel isn't just higher octane, it's that premium additive package that makes the difference. So the guys at Shell, when they said that their fuel can actually reduce wear, that wasn't just a marketing claim. The science says it does. And as you know, what this channel is all about 
is science, not speculation. And these are incredibly cool results. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.